thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Your Health. My name is Purity Musel and cancer is a leading cause of death worldwide, accounting for nearly 10 million deaths in 2020. This data is from the World Health Organization on Your Health. We talk about ovarian cancer, causes, science, prevention, and the available treatment options. Our guest is Dr. Gladwell Carrier, a medical oncologist. Welcome to the show, and thank you so much, Dr. Tari, for making time for us. Thank you very much, Purity, for inviting. Mm -hmm. So you can begin by letting us know uh, what ovary does, where it's located in the body, before we talk about what could go wrong with this organ. Um, now, the ovary is part of the gynecological structures or the reproductive organs in a woman's body. Now, we usually have um, the vagina going into the uterus or womb, and then we have the fallopian tubes, and those fallopian tubes usually envelop the ovaries. Mm -hmm. Now, in a woman's reproductive cycle, uh, during ovulation, ovules or eggs are produced by the ovaries and they enter the fallopian tube and they go to the womb or the uterus where they are fertilized mm -hmm. and a zygote is formed which will grow into a baby. Mm -hmm. So the ovaries produce eggs and they are the structure on both sides, the right and left, and these are part of the reproductive organs in a woman's body. Mm -hmm. yes. and that means if there are no ovaries, there is no baby. There is no fertility. There is yes. no fertility of a yes. woman. So what could possibly go wrong? You know, what are some of the, let me say, illnesses or diseases that affect complications that affect or could affect the ovary? So there is a, a number of uh, problems that are can arise from ovaries mm. that will lead to their dysfunction or in their ability to produce eggs. Mm. And part of those problems may include, you know, having benign growths or growths that are not malignant, having malignant growths or cancerous growths on the ovary, but that may stretch over to other complications, for example, infections, mm. Sometimes the ovaries can be part of what we call adhesions. If a woman has had prior surgery, that would cause a blockage in the migration of the eggs into the fallopian tube. And therefore, significant problems can arise from ovaries. Mm. But among those is the ability of these ovaries to transform into malignant growths. Which is now the ovarian cancer. cancer. Ovarian cancer, yes. Maybe uh, you can expound more on what this growth or this cancer is all about. And I know um, most times experts will say there is no known cause for cancer. I don't know whether you will say the <laughs> same, but I'm sure there are risk factors to it. Yeah, there yes. are certain risk factors that are associated with ovarian cancer, but uh, something goes wrong in the body and there is a malignant transformation that causes these cells that make up the ovary to become malignant or cancerous. Now we'll go through the risk factors, but when the cancer develops, it continues to grow, becomes large, and sometimes may manifest with a bit of pain and discomfort at one side of the woman's lower abdomen. And this cancer has also the ability to spread or metastasize and can actually lead to death mm -hmm. if not diagnosed early enough. Mm -hmm. yes. Let's talk about uh, signs. Are there early signs do we have now advanced, you know, signs of uh, ovarian cancer? How are you able to, because you talked about some pain on the lower um, abdomen of a woman and, and there are so many uh, reasons for such pains, even, you know, cramping also causes pain. But how are you able to identify that this is not normal and could be cancer on my ovaries? Now, Purity, you're quite right yeah. that many of the signs and symptoms of ovarian cancer are very non-specific. That means that they can be caused by many other health problems, including being constipated, having gastroenteritis, uh, having uh, premenopausal symptoms before your periods, uh, you know, and other general abdomen pains like being bloated. Now, because of that non-specificity, 
which we all go through some of these symptoms in day-to-day -day living, we don't go to hospital when we feel these signs, and therefore women take very long before a diagnosis of ovarian cancer is made. So one of the first signs is that there is no sign at all. That's there is why no it's referred to as a silent a killer. A silent killer. Yeah. So when ovarian cancer is starting, there is no pain, there is no discomfort, there is no warning at all that you have ovarian cancer. By the time you're getting some pain and discomfort, it's lived in the body lo long enough to be a large size which causes compression or which usually undergoes torsion or turns and therefore causes significant pain or it spreads and causes water, what we call ascites. And the more it grows, the more it spreads, it leads to wasting or weight loss mm -hmm. and inability to feed and women may start to feel nauseated, to vomit. They, because of the pressure on the abdomen, because of the large growth that is spreading to the lymph nodes, mm -hmm. they get leg swelling. Sometimes these ovarian malignancies may produce hormone and cause pervaginal bleeding. Even in times when women are not expecting to bleed, they are postmenopausal, or maybe they are even too young to bleed mm -hmm. in the types of ovarian cancers that occur in young people. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, purity, sometimes ovarian cancer needs to be found before it manifests in any manner. And you know why, why I'm a bit concerned? You said that before you could actually realize you have uh, this type of a cancer, then it's really grown, you know, yes. and it's a bit huge. Then uh, the experts will say all t or most types of cancers uh, during the first or second stage, they can be treated. Now, what happens if, for example, the, this cancer is already spreading and it's when you're finding out that I have ovarian cancer, is, the, is, it, is it treatable? Can that be reversed? Um, late diagnosis of cancer, when it is metastatic or stage four, mm. is mainly incurable. Yeah. That means it has left the primary ovarian site and metastasized to other secondary sites, mm. like the lung, the liver, sometimes even the bone. Ovarian cancer can spread to the brain. At that stage, it's incurable, but it can still be treated in what we call palliative treatment. That means that we treat to alleviate pain and discomfort, mm -hmm. to uh, get rid of some of the symptoms that cause discomfort and suffering, and that's what we call palliation. And we also treat to buy time. So if we treat and reduce the malignancy, then women will live longer, mm -hmm. even if they'll not be totally cured of the cancer, the ovarian cancer that they have. The only way now to detect this cancer, because at initial stages there are no signs, it's maybe early screening. Yes, maybe we can talk about early screening, screening, screening in is preventing. To go for screening, uh, yes. yes, maybe you can take us through the need for early screening as as far as preventing. Uh, ovarian cancer is concerned. Now, um, um, the medical advice to women so that an early diagnosis can be made is actually to go and see the doctor when you don't have any problem at all. And part of the checks that should be done to a woman will include as you have your breast check, you have your pap smear for cervical cancer. The doctor can also examine and probably do an ultrasound and be able to visualize the ovaries. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a mere conversation with a doctor where he takes your history mm -hmm. may lead to um, revelation to your doctor that you have certain signs and symptoms that may be associated with ovarian cancer. Mm -hmm. That will trigger investigations which can lead to an early diagnosis of ovarian cancer. Mm -hmm. Like many other malignancies, Ovarian cancer diagnosed early is curable. So when it's small enough and limited to one ovary or even to the two ovaries where surgery can be done, treatment can be given, and many ovarian cancer patients survive if they are diagnosed early. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and when you talk about curable, is it uh, 
you know, total cure, total cure for cancer because I've heard of patients who, you know, get diagnosed uh, with any type of cancer, especially for women, breast cancer, and then it's cured, but then it recurs. Yes, there is always a few years, years later. Yeah. Yeah. There is always a risk that yeah. cancer can recur. Mm -hmm. Even when treated for very early cancer, it's very hard around the world, even in high excellence centers, yeah. giving a woman a 100% guarantee that her tumor will never recur. Mm. But having said that, an early diagnosis of ovarian cancer is curable in a good percentage of women mm -hmm. in whom it's diagnosed early and they get correct treatment. They do survive and the cancer may never come back again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a bit, um, you know, complicated the, for, yeah. for ovarian cancer because initially no signs. Yes. So what are the risk factors or rather who is at a risk of having ovarian cancer? Um, if I may start off by saying that every woman is at risk okay. of having ovarian cancer. Every are, woman of every any age is at risk of getting ovarian cancer. Okay. Different types of ovarian cancer mean manifest at certain stages of life. We do have the certain, we have different types of ovarian cancer. We have epithelial types, we have what we call stromal types, and we have types that occur like germ cell tumors that occur in young patients, probably even in their teenage years. And depending on these types of ovarian cancer and with good intervention, the cure rates may vary. Germ cell tumors have very high cure rates. They occur in young patients, but even in these, a diagnosis should actually be made early mm -hmm. so that you have greater certainty that you're going to survive and a recurrence is not going to occur. Mm -hmm. So majority of older women get what we call epithelial tumors. They are usually harder to diagnose and they also probably harder to cure than the germ cell tumors in younger patients. Mm. So also the type of ovarian cancer that you have, but mainly the stage of diagnosis will influence whether you're cured or not. Mm -hmm. let, let me add that seeking correct treatment is also very important so that the right thing is done at the right stage. There are times we find an advanced stage of ovarian cancer, for example, stage three, and sometimes we have to give medication before the surgery is done mm -hmm. so that we shrink the tumor and we make it amenable to complete surgical resection mm -hmm. so that we can improve the chances of cure in these women or even increase what we call the disease-free survival. Mm -hmm. Sometimes purity, the cancer must come back, but given the intervention and treatment, you can prolong the interval with which, between which, you know, one treatment and the recurrence occurs. Mm -hmm. We call it disease-free survival. Right. So you increase the lifespan of a woman, even if she'll get a recurrence of her ovarian cancer mm. by giving correct treatment. The risk factors, Doc. Yes, mm -hmm. so the risk factors of ovarian cancer, I must say, are start from being a woman, Two is increasing age. Mm -hmm. We think there are more ovarian uh, malignancies as women grow older. Yeah. Ovarian cancers are associated with obesity or being overweight. Ovarian cancers are also associated with certain hormone replacement therapies. Mm. They are also related with inherited genetic syndromes. For example, hereditary breast ovarian syndrome or polycystic ovarian syndrome. Ovarian cancer is also associated with fertility stimulation in women who have primary infertility and sometimes they need drugs to stimulate them. Mm -hmm. Women who smoke have also a bigger risk of getting ovarian cancer. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the risk factors. And you've talked about age. Yes. Because um, when, we, when we get to the treatment uh, options available for um, you know, ovarian cancer, there are so many, let me not call them theories, but advice that women are given that you need to, you know, because you have a higher risk of getting this kind of cancer. As you grow old, maybe you need to have your children early enough. As a doctor, would you <laughs> emphasize on the same because every woman is at risk, you know? 
Well, there are certain, both for ovarian and breast cancer, there is an association with getting babies later or having your first full pregnancy later mm. in life, uh, putting you at risk of getting either breast or ovarian cancer. But I would say that the percentages How of such a risk... Is later? <laughs> <laughs> usually, literature usually talks about getting babies over the age of 35 as okay. being late. Okay. Although we know that as the world changes, yeah. that seems to be, um, you know, the trend in the day. Yeah. But that's what is considered late. So if you have a full-term pregnancy after the age of 35, you're deemed to be of higher risk mm. than somebody who got babies earlier. But I must say that certain risk factors also compound. Like you may have a genetic predisposition in that you're born with a genetic risk, like the BRCA1 or 2 mutations, and then you delay your pregnancy, or you know, you also have, you smoke, or you have other risk factors that predispose you more to getting ovarian cancer. Mm -hmm. In some of those inherited genetic mutations, women get breast cancer first, and then as they grow older, they get ovarian cancer. That's why you saw Angelina Jolie, the yeah. famous actress, yeah. having her breast removed when she was in her 40s, and as soon as she got to 50, she removed her ovaries. Because in her family, they have the inherited mutation for both breast and ovarian cancer. Mm -hmm. So that too can be a risk factor. It's, you mentioned it's also genetic. Yes. It can also be, let's talk, let's talk about treatment for cancer because it's, um, the, maybe we, you can start by mentioning the, can, the burden of uh, ovarian cancer here in Kenya because why I want to talk about that is uh, it, it, the treatment is still expensive despite uh, the fact that uh, cancer is now a bigger challenge here in Kenya and around the world. Very true purity. Yeah, yeah. So ovarian cancer in what we call our global can data or the data that has been collected by Kenya Medical Research Institute falls around number five in the malignancies for women. So we have breast cancer first, cancer of the uterine cervix. We have uh, colorectal cancer also in that risk of women and esophageal cancer in women. And then we get cancer of the ovary, mm -hmm. which makes out around 4% mm -hmm. of all malignancies in women. So um, the treatment usually is surgical or using chemotherapy. And in rare instances, we use radiotherapy if there is bleeding or pain or spread to the brain or spread to the bone. Um, there is a lot of myths associated mm. with treatment. Yes. But generally, ovarian cancer is a very chemosensitive disease mm. in that it responds very well to chemotherapy and is usually if shrunk or cytoreduced, can be amenable to surgery if it's made smaller by drugs. Mm -hmm. But you'll find many people saying that um, they'd rather not have chemotherapy and therefore use diet mm. to try and control the cancer. Mm -hmm. But those unconventional means rarely really work mm -hmm. as a direct treatment on their own. Mm -hmm. yeah. And why maybe they say that it's uh, because of the effects, the side effects of uh, the chemotherapy and the misconceptions that yes, you mentioned that uh, once a patient is put uh, under treatment, they wear out really fast. Maybe is that true? And, and, and is, is there something that can be done to ease the pain of the treatment journey for patients? I, I always emphasize mm. that the pain of the disease is greater mm. when you come with very advanced disease. Yeah. It's far greater than, than any the, treatment intervention. Okay. All right. Generally, ovarian cancer is a disease of the older women, mm. very generally, because I mentioned there are types that occur in young women. Mm -hmm. So in this older woman, these drugs are developed to treat this patient who is older. She probably has other comorbidities, including hypertension. She may be diabetic. She may have a heart disease because she's older. Mm -hmm. So the drugs that are given are usually quite tolerable for ovarian cancer. Mm -hmm. So we are able to treat women in their 70s, women in their early 80s quite easily. Mm -hmm. 
And now there are even new targeted drugs where we test certain molecular markers and we use tablets to treat ovarian cancer, especially in women who we are not curing. Mm. We'll treat them with chemotherapy, shrink the tumor, probably do some operation, and when the disease recurs because we knew that it would recur because it was advanced, we put them on targeted treatment, mm. which also prolongs their survival. Right. So I like to encourage women to seek proper medical advice um, and not really to be subjected to myths mm -hmm. uh, or beliefs without seeking a proper opinion. A proper opinion. But I do admit there are side effects of mm. chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. I do admit chemotherapy is most times expensive and inaccessible. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, the National Health Insurance cover mm -hmm. does cover for chemotherapy and has created access to many women who would not have otherwise afforded. Mm. And does our treatment, um, you know, full treatment of ovarian cancer mean that uh, a woman is able to regain their fertility or is it just advisable to do away with your ovaries? Now, if the disease is diagnosed late and surgery has to be done such that the whole uterus has to come out, to come out yeah. what we call a hysterectomy with bilateral sulfingoferectomy, yeah. um, a woman is rendered infertile and yeah. incapable of carrying a pregnancy to term. Mm. So that's a reality about the treatment that yeah. is true. Yeah. There are certain types of... Um, intermediate malignant potential growths meaning that they fall between malignant and benign and there are others that are purely benign and they are not malignant and sometimes the surgeries done for those type of growths are what we'll call fertility sparing mm. in that you can only remove part of the ovary that is affected or you can remove one ovary and spare the other right but that is largely for non-malignant or the less malignant sort of growths. Mm -hmm. Now, in a malignancy, the threat of death is bigger than the threat, I guess, to a woman mm -hmm. of thinking about whether she'll have a baby or not. Mm -hmm. But it's a real difficulty. Right. As we wind up, how do we prevent or say control, you know, ovarian cancer? Because I know risk factors are there, but is there a way we can minimize or reduce the chances of having one? You know. um, also, a very good point, Purity. Yeah. Um, you know, I always emphasize that um, you may not reduce your risk of getting mm. cancer yeah. because sometimes it's genetic, mm. sometimes it's a familial syndrome, sometimes it's inherited. But by change of health seeking behavior, you can be able to pick it early and save your life. But seeing a doctor mm. regularly and having a general check yeah. is probably the best bet to save your life from okay. ovarian Seeing cancer. Seeing a doctor and early screening. Early, early screening All and right. early detection. Thank yes. you so much. Thank you so yes. much, Dr. Dadwell Carey, for your time. We really, really do appreciate. And of course, I trust women have had out here early screening, even as the world commemorates the Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month. Thank you for watching this episode of Your Health. I'm Purity Musea. Keep watching KBC. See you again next time.